We are ready for the next uh, show. Ja. Balint Dima er absolut det man kan kalle en norgesvenn. Do you understand that word, norgesvenn? No. <laughs> uh, because uh, Balint has been here for so many years uh, yeah. and have worked Then with, I understood. Uh, <laughs> worked with uh, Tor Erik Brandrud on several projects and uh, we expect him soon to learn Norwegian. <laughs> not not now, but <laughs> and uh, he will talk about uh, phylogenetics, which can be quite heavy for us that are not professional. But I uh, trust you to make this uh, understandable for everybody. Yeah, it will be. It okay. will not be phylogenetic. It will be more taxonomy. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, first of all, uh, to be here. Uh, to, and uh, I have never had a lecture uh, uh, in Norway, and I never had a lecture uh, in such a large audience. So uh, I'm, it will be curious <laughs> how I will behave. Uh, so uh, the lecture uh, will be about uh, some new results uh, I'm working with. So. Uh, and uh, not deep phylogeny, just uh, uh, I would like to show some new uh, genera, new uh, species, uh, based on uh, new phylogenetic results. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, quite lucky that uh, uh, in the beautiful uh, lectures uh, we, ha we have heard uh, uh, yesterday and today, uh, many of uh, our colleagues uh, already discussed, explained uh, why and how uh, important uh, the DNA sequence is uh, in the taxonomy or in the mycology nowadays. And um, that's why I don't go in the details now. Uh, but uh, the most important thing that uh, we have to um, the limit we have to look for uh, natural entities uh, based on the DNA sequence data. So the DNA, the molecular data, uh, help us to, uh, to delimit uh, good natural entities. And then we can look the morphology, whether we, we are able to uh, uh, recognize these uh, groups uh, uh, in terms of uh, fruiting body, because I'm working with uh, uh, mushroom forming fungi, as uh, you probably uh, already recognize it. Uh, before I uh, go into the details, uh, I would like to uh, introduce my uh, working place now. This is our campus in Budapest uh, uh, at the Danube, so I, I can every day uh, look the Danube from my window. It's a very nice uh, office. And uh, this is uh, our uh, mycological group. Uh, everybody works with the uh, fungal endophytes, mainly, in grasslands except uh, this guy who is devoted to uh, taxonomy and phylogeny of basidiomycetes. And uh, I mostly work uh, with these uh, two tiny little genera, Cortinarius and Antoloma. Uh, that's why I don't tell too much about these two groups, but just briefly. And uh, I would like to show other uh, projects which uh, I am working with. with. And uh, these uh, other groups also have uh, many connections to Norway. So, uh, first of all, of course, the Antaloma project. Uh, Jon Bjarne and Egil already uh, uh, showed many pictures and uh, uh, discussed or uh, talked about uh, this uh, Antaloma project in Norway. So this is a very recent uh, photo of our uh, core group. So we had this uh, very intensive uh, uh, one week uh, this week, <laughs> this Antoloma workshop uh, at Torex uh, place. And uh, we are at the publishing uh, stage in many groups. And uh, in the last two years, we, we have published a uh, uh, few new species. Uh, first was this Antoloma kamemori. You can see this is only uh, north of Norway, from home Basdalen. It's a, a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting position. This species uh, in the phylogeny, it's related to this pseudo conferendum, which was uh, sh already uh, showed uh, 
uh, today and uh, to, uh, yesterday. And uh, another one from Honvas Dalen, this is quite uh, recently described, uh, Antolma Aurora Borealis. Uh, this is uh, in the group of uh, Rhodopolium, so we call it Rhodopolia. Uh, this is a subgenus Antoloma. This is also a very uh, interesting and difficult group. But uh, for the time being, we know this species uh, only from Norway. Then uh, we described two species, uh, again, very recently, in uh, Personia Fungal Planet uh, description sheets. Uh, one of them is uh, Antoloma silvae frondose, which is a widespread species. It occurs uh, also in Hungary and uh, in Russia, but in Norway as well. Uh, this is also uh, belong to the, uh, this Rhodopolia group, so these are, these are the ectomycorrhizal uh, entolomas. Rather difficult to distinguish them based on just uh, <laughs> macromorphology, and also micromorphology is a little bit uh, complicated at the moment, but uh, we have to uh, learn these species. The next one is uh, another from those species. Uh, we almost exclusively find, find these species under uh, Tilia. So uh, with Toreric, this Tilia project, uh, we found it uh, many places, and we called it, uh, this species Antoloma uh, Tiliae. But it also uh, grows in, in Russia, for example, and uh, just a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, I uh, confirmed the species from Hungary as well. So uh, these are the species which we have described and uh, which we worked on in the last uh, year. But uh, we have intensive studies on this uh, nice subgenus, uh, Cyanula, which is also uh, showed by Jorn Bjarne in details. Some of the pictures you can recognize maybe from his lecture also. Uh, so uh, the next aim, uh, our next aim, the, the next aim of the group uh, is to uh, make a revised uh, monograph or kind of inventory of this uh, blue uh, cyanola species, which is a very interesting uh, and uh, large group of uh, entolomas, mainly growing on grasslands, but also uh, some of them can be found in, in forest. And now uh, I switch to another uh, fungal group in the uh, Entolomataceae uh, family. This is the Rhodocibe nitellina, Rhodocibe nitellina. Uh, what I would like to, <laughs> just I forgot to mention that uh, with the help of Torerik, we uh, put the Norwegian names just to help uh, understand uh, these uh, mushrooms if somebody uh, don't know the Latin name so well. So this species, uh, uh, this uh, colibioid uh, small uh, Mushroom is, uh, is called Rhodosy benitaina, nowadays Rhodofana nitalina, it's, uh, it has an own genus. And it's, uh, morphologically it's quite easy to recognize uh, on the field, it's an orange, uh, red-brown uh, mushroom with strong uh, farinaceous smell. And it grows in coniferous and also in deciduous forests. But uh, when we look at the DNA uh, of this uh, Rhodosy benitaina, then uh, we realize that uh, in Europe, at least, uh, there are at least 16 species, and this is based on multi-gene analysis, so five, we have five genes. And uh, of course, the different, uh, this, these are different species, they look different, but uh, the problem is that uh, the intraspecific variation is also very big, so one species can look like this, and six species can look like this. So, uh, again, this cryptic uh, species problem uh, we have in this group. And uh, I took the Norbot sequences also, and I also uh, had, we collected many uh, specimens uh, with Torek during the years. So I uh, inserted them in the phylogenetic tree. We had also, uh, we had a poster in, in Q in the State of the World's Fungi uh, Symposium on this uh, topic. And then these numbers uh, are the number of species in Norway at the moment. So it seems that uh, Norway has at least 10 species in this group. So it, uh, now the, uh, the future task is to, <laughs> to find out uh, how these species can be recognized in the field, or 
with microscopy. So I don't think that anybody made a thorough micro microscopy in this group because it was just Rolosib and Italina. It's like Cortinus infractus. So uh, just to recognize them list in the species list, and that's all. But now we have to uh, to learn. Uh, because the, the genetic differences in the, uh, between these species are very big, actually. So it's not like one, two persons as normal the ag agarics, but it's uh, sometimes uh, five, ten uh, person difference in the DNA sequence. Uh, so it's an interesting and fascinating group, again, to study. And now to the Cortinarius, Slörshop, that's I know in Norwegian. So, uh, some of you might know that I'm, and also Paul mentioned, that I'm working with Orerik uh, and Egil and many other people here uh, in Cortinarius. Uh, and we have this, we had this uh, Telia project, this Kaklindeskog project. Uh, here is a typical monitoring uh, moment. Torek and Egil uh, make inventory on, on the field. And sometimes, uh, the, these uh, localities are very difficult to, uh, to reach. And uh, Rune and Torek asking how to get down, or to jump or not to jump. And sometimes uh, this, was, this was the way how to go down to the, to the uh, uh, plot, which we had to, uh, had to uh, monitor. So it was a really uh, fascinating uh, project. <laughs> hopefully it will be. <laughs> hopefully it will be. Uh, uh, continuing, and sometimes uh, we meet very interesting uh, creatures in the forest <laughs> with much of Ramaria. <laughs> but uh, back to uh, Cortinarius, so uh, I show you a small journey. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Cortinarius outside of Europe now because I'm also working uh, with uh, uh, other. Uh, colleagues uh, outside of Europe. So first, uh, India, uh, just uh, the Himalaya. This is a sort of county name, this Uttarakhand. So uh, I received many specimens from this area. Uh, and these uh, Cortinite species uh, grow there with uh, uh, evergreen oaks, Quercus leuco trihophora, for example and uh, also rhododendron is in that forest, so it's a very interesting forest. Uh, I should tell that I have never been outside Europe to collect, so these specimens <laughs> always uh, came to me for analy analyzing. Uh, and then uh, now we are uh, describing uh, two new species from this area. Uh, the one is uh, in the Cortina section Percomis, so it's a phlegmasium species in the Percomis uh, around the Cortinus musivus, that's the uh, closest relative. Uh, and it looks like a Percomis with this orange cap and uh, slimy uh, cap surface and has this uh, strong uh, earth-like uh, or uh, banana smell. So it's a distinct species in the phylogeny if we take all the known sequences of uh, Percomis species. So Torek is involved in this species also. So it will come uh, hopefully within a couple of months. And uh, it was very interesting that uh, uh, a sister species or a, a closely related species of um, Cortinus rubicundulus grows in this area with Quercus leucotrihophora. And uh, I was a little bit surprised when uh, I looked at the gene bank and uh, collected all the sequences which belongs to the section Rubicunduli. Because Rubicunduli is always, it was always a lonely rider <coughs> own uh, species, but uh, it seems that in the world there are so many uh, different uh, species belonging to this group. So, uh, but on every, every species uh, are outside of Europe. So Europe we only have one and then other continents have more. So uh, I don't want to uh, pronounce this uh, name. This is, uh, <laughs> uh, it's the region where this species was found. So <laughs> uh, it's for the <laughs> Indian people maybe. Okay, and then uh, 
forget these two tiny little genera. And uh, I show you some uh, widespread uh, agarics uh, in the relation in the uh, Clitocybe sensulato group. Uh, probably this Clitocybe is the most problematic uh, genus name because it contains all kinds of widespread uh, species with a uh, little bit decurrent gills and uh, some funnel-shaped uh, cap. Uh, and this is this is really artifact. Arti uh, this is really uh, uh, artifact group based on morphology. And uh, no uh, no wonder that um, based on the phylogenetic results, uh, this Clitocybe sensulato split uh, into se several uh, genera. And also these genera, which were formerly recognized as Clitocybe, they split into several families. First of all, I would like to uh, show uh, some pictures of, from this new family, which we established uh, last year, this Pseudoclitocybaceae, very nice name. It's, uh, it's the natural group uh, around Pseudoclitocybaceae atiformis, which is a rather frequent species. And uh, this uh, family contains uh, five uh, genera at the moment. So here is a family tree with the most uh, important families around this Pseudoclitocybase. It's here. And we, we have here this Bianulare, which is the Catatelasma clade, and the Entolomatase, the Tricholomatase, and Leophilase. So these are, and the rest of the Clitocybe, Clitocybe uh, species are here. But every, in every, almost every group, we find some Clitocybe species, which was formerly called Clitocybe. So then here is the tree of the, the family. And the, here we have five uh, genera, rather well distinguished based on uh, uh, molecular data. The first uh, genus is uh, Pogonoloma, which was uh, divided from Porpoloma a couple of years ago. Because Porpoloma uh, was uh, typified from southern uh, hemisphere, from South America. So it, it turned out to be that Porpoloma is a, uh, is a South, uh, South American uh, genus. And all this uh, Nordic uh, hemis northern hemisphere uh, uh, Porpoloma was something else. Some of this Porpoloma were Pogonoloma. And uh, surprisingly, some Leucopaxillus went into this uh, genus. This Leucopaxillus macrocephalus, uh, for example, it's now a Pogonoloma. Uh, I don't think this species is in Norway, but uh, it's in Hungary. It's a protected species in Hungary. It's a very big one. So it can, can be like this one, 40, 50 centimeter or so. It grows uh, in old Quercus forest, uh, and it's a saprophyte mushroom, at least we think. <laughs> So it's a fascinating mushroom with a corn-like smell, or, a, or when it's old, it's becoming more earth-like. And uh, this was uh, transferred to this uh, Pogonoloma and belongs to this uh, new family now. And then we uh, made a new combination also because uh, we uh, realized that this uh, Leucopaxus macrocephalus name, in, in nomenclature point of view, it's, it's uh, illegitim. And every other, uh, so the, the basionym was illegitim, Agaricus macrocephalus, and then everything which was based on this name, the combination is very illegitim. So we had to find a, uh, a name for that, and final, finally we found the name of Quellet, and then that's why it's now ma Pogonoma macrorhizum. Clitocybe alexandri, this is a uh, species, red listed species in Norway, but uh, you can find it in the spruce forest, but uh, uh, this work showed that uh, there are two species in Europe. One is southern one, the, the true Clitocyba alexandri is a southern species. It was described uh, from France and also found in Morocco and Italy, but uh, it's uh, Thermophilus uh, uh, deciduous or uh, in, in pine forest. So this is a Hungarian uh, collection, not so nice, but uh, at the moment we don't know this Clitocybe alexandri, which uh, had a new genus name, Clitopaxillus. So Clitopaxillus alexandri is not known from Nordic countries at the moment. But what we have here, 
This is, uh, we described it as a new, Clitopaxillus fibulatus. It has this Norwegian name. So this was the Clitosib Alexandri in Nordic countries. So this is a Nordic or uh, montane species. It can be found in Central Europe as well, uh, in spruce uh, forests. <coughs> it's very similar, uh, but uh, it has typically this uh, cracking uh, cap surface. So at the moment, this Clitopaxillus uh, uh, gener genus has two, ha has two species. And then uh, Clitosibe harperi, it's, it was known from Finland and Norway. It's, so it was also a, Nor a Nordic uh, species uh, in, in coniferous forest. But uh, based on the phylogenetic uh, results, uh, this, uh, this was a separate uh, lineage. So we named this after uh, the Finnish mycologist Harmaja. So it's now Harmaje, the, the genus name. Uh, and the species is Harmae harperi, which uh, is, uh, I think, is red listed. So it's a rare species, but uh, it's a little bit difficult to distinguish from the other one, from this uh, Fibulatus, the Alexandri group. But uh, this, this uh, genus has uh, no uh, clamps uh, in the basidium. So the, the Clitopaxillus, the former one, had uh, uh, many clamps in the, in the fruit body, but this has no, it, usually in the mycelium, you can find only uh, these clamps. And uh, then another species occurred in Norway. Uh, this was the Clitosibe uh, Harperi Senzo Gru Gulden. And uh, we were very grateful to, uh, to name this species after Gru. So now it's Harmae Guldenie. So this is the, uh, this is what in Norway was Clitosibe uh, harperi. So this is a little bit more brownish species. Uh, looks like an infundibulisibe, uh, but has no clamp connection at all. Uh, and uh, honestly, it's very difficult to distinguish from the previous one and also from other Clitosiboid members. So it's really preliminary now. Uh, we have to learn also to recognize this uh, nice and rare species. This is another genus, which was described recently uh, from the Italians, Musumacea, or Musumecia, uh, named after a Swiss mycologist, and uh, also belong to this, uh, this group, this Pseudoclitosibaceae, uh, based on the molecular data. And uh, these two collections were, were found uh, just a couple of months ago, with Torerik, we found it uh, in Telemark. Uh, and this, uh, this is the first record of this uh, Musumecia betlachensis species uh, in Norway. And so it's very rare in the Nordic countries as well. So in Denmark, uh, they found also a couple of years or last year. So now it's only two uh, localities known in Nordic countries for this species. It's a very small one and it's very anonymous. So it looks like any kind of Clitosibe with a little bit uh, rose uh, uh, tinge uh, in the gills. So this is also something to learn. Clitosibe trulliformis, it's also a, a collective name or collective uh, species. Uh, it can be recognized rather easily. It has a grayish, uh, greenish tinge on the cap decurrent gills and very strong farinaceous smell again. And it grows in grasslands and it grows in, in the forest as well. But uh, when you look at the DNA again, <laughs> we had a problem. So it's a fascinating group again to study what are the differences and we need of course type uh, studies to, to settle these old names for these uh, groups. Now, uh, I jump to Clavariaceae. This is a, a family with mainly clavarioid members, but there are uh, gilled Clavariaceae. So the phylogeny uh, showed us that uh, in the Clavariaceae, not only this kind of fruit body exists, but gilled fungi, 
little bit like uh, Higrosibe. Small, small fungi uh, occurred in this uh, family, and they just nested uh, within these uh, club-shaped uh, uh, groups. And what are these uh, genera? There are three at the moment. The first is the Camarophyllopsis. Uh, here is the Camarophyllopsis schulzeri, which is the type species of the genus. And Camarophyllopsis at the moment is uh, it's a little uh, group only, because the other uh, Camarophyllopsis species went somewhere else, it formed an own uh, genus, uh, which called Hodophilus. Actually, this was described based on morphology already several decades ago, but then it was just a synonym. But now, again, uh, it seems that this was a good uh, choice. So this uh, Hodophilus fertens, or Camarophyllopsis fertens, this uh, uh, species with the strong uh, naphthalene smell, this is now, uh, these are now Hodophilus. Um, and here are many species. So there are many naphthalene uh, uh, smell, naphthalene odor species uh, around uh, in the world. <laughs> in North America there are many, in Europe. So I cannot, I cannot show you uh, any true Hodophilus uh, fertens at the moment. So that was typified, but I don't have a picture. These are all undescribed Hodophilus fertens. Uh, this is from Hungary and this is from Sweden. Uh, there are microscopy, which uh, based, based, based on microscopy, these species can be uh, separated, but it's very difficult. You have to be very skilled in microscopy. You have to look uh, the pile pellis in different uh, parts, in the, in the margin and in the, in the middle. So it's not so easy to, to uh, distinguish them at the moment. And there are other uh, Hodophilus species without this smell. Some of them have this yellow uh, uh, stipe, this Mikatsa group, and some new species appeared uh, also in this group and still some undescribed. And uh, this is interesting because I received this picture a couple of days ago from Finland where they found this Hodophilus rugulosus, which was only known from the type species, type specimen from North America. Uh, and then they sequenced it, so it was completely the same with the type sequence. So it occurs in Finland, probably it's also in Norway. And uh, it was a new uh, group, Lamello clavaria, which is also in this, uh, in this uh, uh, family. And uh, Torek found it in uh, his loan, <laughs> the neighbor's loan. Uh, and this is the second find of the world, because the, when they described the species uh, it, from Finland, it was only known from one uh, one single uh, collection. And then uh, just a little, uh, some news from Hungary, some tax of novelties. We have some old growth forest, and in this old growth forest, uh, we discovered a small mushroom, which we described as new, as a new genus and a new species, together with Pierre Artu Moreau. Uh, it belongs to the Tubari assay, and uh, it has a unique uh, microscopy and also a very little, uh, little bit pleurotoid uh, fruit body with uh, brown gills. So this, and, the, uh, and the habitat was this very old uh, uh, beech log. But this is a really tiny, it's, it's a half, half a centimeter. This is a microscopy, the cysteria and the spores. And then on the same forest, there are two very threatened species. Uh, the one is this called Aurantiporus alborubescens, and another one is this uh, Aurantiporus croceus. The problem, again, that uh, the type species of the genus Aurantiporus is the croceus, but then it's distantly related to this one. Therefore, we borrowed the type species uh, and the type specimen uh, from Paris. This was this uh, Feolus alborubescens, and it was just collected 100 years ago. And uh, we successfully sequenced the ITS uh, region of this uh, uh, old type. It was a very big surprise. And it uh, confirmed that this is uh, the true Aurantiporus alborubescens, but distinct from the uh, other one, the type species. So 
We created this name Odoria because this species have, has a strong Swedish odor, and uh, we combined uh, this uh, uh, genus. Okay, and uh, we have some uh, step fungi also, uh, interesting, this Flocularia luteovirens, which is a uh, protected species. And uh, it belongs to Agaricaceae, uh, together with Cystoderma, for instance, and Squamanita. And we have a lookalike in Hungary, and this is this, uh, this was Flocularia riccani formerly. But the North American, they described this new genus, Cercopamices, from Utah state. Uh, this is the species, how it looks like, and the spores, it's a little bit uh, ornamented. And this also belongs to uh, the family, but uh, distinct from Flocularia. It's a sister to Repartitella. And uh, when we saw this picture, we immediately know that uh, we have the same species in Hungary, which was described from Hungary, this Rickeni. Uh, this is a species in very, it's frequent in our uh, Robinia plantations. And it was a marketplace fungi uh, up to now. Now it's not anymore, but uh, people uh, could buy it in the, in the market. So this is an edible and a good fungi. So then uh, we, of course, sequenced these uh, collections, and we also tried to sequence the type, uh, for, which was described from Hungary. And uh, it turned out to be that this is just the same as the North American crocodilinus. So uh, now this Rickeni has the priority. So we have this uh, genus. Uh, in Hungary, this is also some pictures. Interestingly, uh, it's in Öland. It's, it's, it's in Öland in Nordic countries uh, with Crategus. And also here are many Crategus. So uh, the connection to Robinia, it's uh, probably uh, not true. It's probably some kind of uh, something, some kind of relationship with, or some kind of uh, separate of activity with uh, Rosaceae. But this should be confirmed. And finally, uh, since I will make another lecture today about the Hungarian bolids, I try to link uh, these two lectures uh, with a Norwegian example. Uh, another f uh, interesting uh, find uh, from the Stilia uh, monitoring project. Uh, Octaviania asterosperma, it's a hypogee, which belongs to the lexinoid clade. So it's a lexinum-related uh, genus with other uh, hypogee from the world. And uh, finally, uh, the Giroporus genus, which is a scleroderma relation, re, uh, related to scleroderma. Uh, normally, we recognize these two species, Castaneus and Cyanestens, but based on the global multigene phylogeny, Castaneus is probably 18 species, and Cyanestens is 10 at the moment. In Hungary, we have three from both group. Uh, these are already described species in the Cyanestens group. So the Cyanestens, uh, Pseudolacteus, and Sulfureus, and the Castanus is still not described. So there are many uh, interesting uh, things uh, globally. And uh, I also uh, borrowed something from Kati, from, uh, from Tejen, from no the Norwegian uh, Castanus and Cyanestens. And uh, you have three species in Norway. The one is uh, this castanos, but this is not the castanos which, is, uh, which will be typified on. So this is a Nordic castanos, actually, which grows in the Nordic countries and Germany, and, and this was found in Hungary last year. So it's not really Nordic, but it was in Fagus Forest at least. But it's very uh, different from the, from the other three species I showed you. And then you have two from the Cyanestens uh, group, the true Cyanestens and this Sulfureus, which was described by Kuolo Kalames from Caucasus, and we studied the type. And so in Norway, there are two Cyanestens now. This is the list of uh, contributors, and maybe there are so many others. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Tusen Tak.